Okay, YouTube, I'm back again. This video, I'm not sure how well I'm showing up in this camera. Doesn't really matter. Um, as long as you can see the bender. For those who have been following, this is going to be a, another part of this um, aero hydraulic conversion with the Harbor Freight Ram and the JD Squared Model 32 bender. Um, I've been posting the build photos online and on a couple of different forums, discussion boards, and, and, and showing people the build and how it's going. And there was a couple of questions and concerns that, that I figured I'd make a video on just so they can see it. Um, just to address it so they can actually see with their own eyes because I could tell them and tell them blue in the face and answer their questions, but until they actually see it, it's another story. So let me take the camera off my tripod and kind of walk you through what I'm trying to show here. Um, number one was clearance. <clears throat> one of uh, one of the question was one of the questions was how much clearance was between. That's not even showing up that well. Um, there, that's a little bit better. Between this bolt and the ram, obviously there's a ton. Um, I'm going to extend the ram to show you at full extension the clearance there, but it's, it's not much different. It, it is closer, but you know there's still at least an inch or so between there. It, plenty of plenty of room. Um, wanted to show you down here. This is kind of close, the the pump, but it, it's still pretty pretty far away. I can jam my finger in there, not all the way through, but. I can get that in there and over here that's how close that is so it's not touching anywhere um, before I extend this I'm, I'm going to tell you I'm going to try to explain a little bit better of why I opted not to box in this section here as well as this front section um, <clears throat> this is something that I'm considering building to sell um, I've got to bring the cost down. I've got to, you know, this is basically my research and development. It's kind of public and actually very public because it's on YouTube. And that's probably not the smartest thing to do if I don't want nobody to steal my ideas. But if they're going to steal it, they're going to steal it. It is what it is. Um, ultimately, I'm just trying to get this built for myself. But if I can make a few bucks off of it, that, that would also be nice. So, anyways, the reason why I didn't put this stuff on here is. Number one, cost. Um, three eighths or three sixteenths plate is not cheap, and the least amount of material overall that I could use, the better for me, because obviously I've got to pay for this. Um, people are only going to pay so much for this this setup. They're looking for a cheap option, not an expensive option. Doesn't matter how how good of a design this is. If it ends out costing them just as much to, to do this setup as it would for them to just get the air over hydraulic setup from JD Squared, they're not going to buy this. You know, they'll just order the, the hydraulic bender from them and, and go that route. So I need to bring the cost down a little bit, but because this is part research and development, I need to find out if it's even necessary. Okay, so next week I'm going to get some tubing in and I'm going to try to put this under load. There's going to actually be a little bit of movement, more than likely, here where the bolts are. Even though these are super tight, um, the holes weren't drilled. They were just plasma cut, so they're a little bit ugly, and there's a little bit of play in there. I figure once I, once I put a, a tube, piece of tubing through here and actually run it through the bend, that this might shift just ever so slightly, if at all. Um, so I'll probably do a couple of bends before I actually do my initial testing or my final testing. Um, what I plan on doing is doing a few measurements from here to here and on the front side from here to here. Um, the reason being is if there's any kind of distortion, you know, either pinch down or spread apart, I'll know that when this is under load, I'll be able to measure before it's under load and then after it's under load to find out if there's any distortion there. More than likely, that's not what I'm going to see. Um, the other part is I'm going to measure from either one of these corners to either the bolt or the very corner over here. 
And what I'm looking for is to find out if there's any kind of stretching. I'm also going to probably measure from here as well. And the reason being is the, the force is obviously being pushed right here. It's going to be pushed on the tubing and on this arm that extends and also right here on this mount. So if there's going to be any kind of issues, it's going to be this mount right here being pushed out like that and pulling on this plate, this boxed in piece of plate, or it's going to be trying to stretch this portion of this plate, both top and bottom. So that's coming next week. That will be recorded. I will show you guys if there's any issues, you're going to see it and, and you're going to see what I'm going to do to fix it. If there's no issues and this is done. Okay, then I'm going to paint it. And that's that. I might not even paint it actually. I, I, honestly, you know what? It's more than likely not going to get painted. <laughs> I kind of like it just being raw metal. Um, so that's what the plan is. And, and like I said, you can see there's no, there's no clearance issues at all. This actually fits really, really well in here. There's a ton of room. So let me hook this up. This is not a permanent setup. Let me make sure my compressor's on and full of air. It is. Okay, this is not a, a permanent air setup. I plan on doing some work to the base here. To Right now it's a little bit wobbly. And it's actually not the tubing. It's that base plate. That's some more 316s down on the floor. And that's what's actually doing the flexing. So what I think I'm going to do is try run some, some arms off here, diagonal, triangulating it, and, and bolt them to the floor. And it's kind of okay that it, that it wobbles because... I want this to sit as level as possible. My floor is not level. So what I plan on doing is putting my levels on here. I don't know if you can see that, but it's slightly off level. So because this moves, I'm able to do a brace and lean this in the direction it needs to go to level it out right before I, I bolt those, those braces onto the ground. I level it that way and level it this way. And the reason why you do that is because this die if this die set is completely leveled across this way and across this way, when you load in your tubing here, if your tubing is level, then you know that it's straight. If you got a, like, like for instance, if, you, if you're doing a, a main hoop on a car, you have, let me get me a piece of soapstone here and some place to, to write. Okay, you're going to have a, a piece of tubing that's bent like that. Okay, when you do your first bend, whether that's level or not doesn't really make any difference. However, when you get ready to do your second bend, that tubing could not have twisted in that, twisted like this inside of that die set at all. Okay, it needs to be perfect, perfect level. So as you move the, the bender to this section here to get ready to bend, you know your bender is level. You'll check it again to make sure that there's no, no flexing going on in the base. But if it's still level, your die set's level, then you just put a, a level here and a level here. And when those two are marked level, you know that this bend is going to be perfect. If it's not perfect, what you're going to have is you're going to have a situation where... Let's kind of try to do this a little bit 3D. I don't know if I can draw that. I can draw fairly decent, but not that good. Um, that's not working. Basically, if you're looking towards the end of it, like this, okay, the bend would be here. If you're looking towards the end of it, one would be here, and one would be kind of shifted a little bit this way because that tubing wasn't installed in their level. So my goal is to try to level that out as best as possible so that I know that I got a nice level platform so that I can rely on it when I'm bending my tubing. Um, some people put these when they're running their over hydraulic, they're not mounting them to the floor. They're running them on you know carts that they can wheel around and, and move around their shop. I thought about doing that and the more I thought about it, the more I opted out of it just for this purpose alone. Um, Again, if it's level, it's like having a nice level welding table. You can use that level as a, as, as a tool because now you're able to know that whatever you're using, whatever you're putting in there or whatever you're building on it, 
has a nice level base for you to, to rely on and work from instead of having to compensate for it. So that's why, that's why I chose to just go ahead and anchor this to the floor. Um, but anyways, I'm going to hook this airline up and I'm going to extend this and, and show you guys, show you it at full extension. I'm also going to show you at where it would be repinned. Um, just a quick heads up, let me get out of the light again. These holes right here in the die are repin holes, okay? And we're talking about this pin right here. It starts in the first hole, and what this does is it ties the die set to this arm. And as that arm pulls out, this die will turn. Well, this pin right here is your anti springback pin. When it gets to this next hole, like it is right now, it just dropped into that hole. Okay? It'll keep the die set from moving. Right now it's not in the hole. When it gets to the hole, it drops down. Okay? And what it does is when you need to reset this, collapse your ram and, and start over, it'll hold your die set and the tension on your tubing while you reset this pin. If that makes sense. If it doesn't, keep watching, you'll get it, hopefully. <laughs> if it still don't make sense, this is probably not your field of of work and you should hand it over to somebody that's got one of these. So because I don't have my compressor set up properly in here, um, I've been using one of these air filters. It's really cold in here. My compressor runs really cool. Um, even though it's an uh, air or oilless compressor, it still runs super cool. If you're interested in that, go check out my other videos. I'm going to just hook it up and extend it. It's actually, I think my compressor is not strong enough to operate this. I'll, I'll find out when I try to bend some tubing in it because it's got some small tanks on it. It's only 4.6 gallons. So, but we'll find that out next week. Um, so let me put you guys back in the tripod and we will get to extending that ram. Okay, that's good enough angle. Okay, if you guys are curious on how this works, some people are pulling this little, I don't know if you can see this here, it's like a little locking tab. My, my actual switch here is bent. I should grab a pair of pliers and straighten that out. It was bent when I got it. It's pretty flimsy metal, so it's no problem to bend back. But when you compress this like that, you can hook that on there. There's a lot of people who say not to have that, and the reason being is it kind of gets stuck on there and they fight with it. I'm probably going to take it off of mine to be perfectly honest with you because I don't need any problems. If I can't hold on to this button then, then I probably shouldn't be doing what I'm doing. So anyway, let me, let me get to, to extending this. slowing down and that's good news. My compressor is having a hard time keeping up with it. Um, the compressor wasn't completely, completely full when it started, but it, it still struggles with it. As long as this will bend quarter inch tubing, I honestly really don't care how long it takes for me to get the bend, as long as it'll do it. So if my compressor will be able to do that, then I'm fine. What I'll probably do is do a little bit of a bend and then just wait for the compressor to catch up and then start again. So just wait for that. I'm actually going to go grab something real quick. There's <coughs> the bar to release that tension when it's ready. Okay, 
there. See, it kept going after I let go of the button because this stupid piece of this crap clip was in the way. I'm actually taking it off right now. Because that will be a problem. If I'm trying to refit, I'll explain to you why it will be a problem in a second. Um, this is an anti-spring back thing. Okay, and it's designed so when it quickly drops into that hole, what it's going to do is keep that die set from turning back. But if there's even a little, a little bit of, like I went too far, you're supposed to stop as soon as it drops in that hole. If you went a little bit too far, what's going to happen is when you try to repin, it's at least going to let a little bit of the tension off of that bend, that you, the tubing that you're trying to bend. And it might not be that big of a deal, but the point of it is to keep the tension on there so that you get the cleanest bend possible. Um, so that's why I just went ahead and took that off because immediately, right away, I, I can tell that it was going to be a problem. Okay, and this is the point where I'm always going to repin. It doesn't matter where I'm at as far as the bend is concerned, I'm always going to repin at this point. Um, this is not a 90 degree bend, this is somewhere around 45. The actual bend, the, the ram will go further, and I'll show you that in a second, how much further it will go. Um, just so you can see where it is at full extension, and we can look at all the clearances again. But, this is at full extension, it gets there, no problem, ready to go. Now let's, let's keep continuing, let's keep extending the ram so that you can see how far it goes. So that's full extension right there. Let me get the camera off here again so we can show you clearances. Obviously there's a, a boatload of room in there. Ton of clearance. Over here, plenty of clearance. Um, about 3 16 between this plate and, and the piston here. But it's got plenty of room. Same, again, plenty of room. Very little change here. Actually, this gap is, is bigger right here than it was before. And, yeah, no, there's no issues. It, it, it works just fine. Um, like I said before, I, I will probably never take it to full extension. And the reason why I won't do that is because anytime you take these jacks and you go all the way to full extension, what you're doing is you're bottoming out the piston and you're putting... You're putting excess um, strain on it. So I'm always going to go to this repin point. Even if I'm not quite, let's say I'm trying to do a 45 and it's not quite 45 because you need to, when you're doing these bends, you always need to take a pass. If you're trying to do a 45, you should take it to like 47, uh, maybe even 48 degrees on the, on, the, on the dial here because you have to compensate for some spring back once you release the pressure. Um, so I'm never going to take it to that full extension. Um, JD squared sells their, their air over hydraulic. I do not believe their air over hydraulic will do a full 90 degree bend on this bender. I think you're pretty much going to be doing what I'm doing here. Um, don't quote me on that. If you're curious, go down to this, the description. Click on the link, go to JD squared and, and do your research on it. But this works for me. It's more than adequate. And... Yeah, that's it. Um, let me let me put this back on the tripod and, and I'll compress this for you. I've got to manually do it. This is not going to retract by itself. Um, I went shopping for some garage door springs and I found some springs, but I didn't like them. And the reason I didn't like them is that the ones that were that I thought were heavy duty enough to, to retract this were only maybe about eight inches, nine inches long in, in a compressed setting. And I I was really worried about stretching them out to this this kind of distance because they were so short. Um, I found some that were a little bit longer but they weren't they didn't have the, the same gauge of wire on them. And and I thought they would work and I was so I hooked them up to a shelf in the store and, and started pulling on it and when I what I noticed was is that Every time I extended the spring or, or stretched out that spring, it didn't collapse 
all the way back. And it was to the point where the, the ones that were identical to it ended up being like three inches shorter than it off of two, try, two times of me trying to stretch that thing out. So needless to say, I put it back on the shelf and walked out of there without them. <laughs> but if it makes you feel any better, I dropped about $50 on bolts and stuff in there. So yeah, let's retract this and, and we'll wrap up this video. Let me mount you guys back in here. Okay. So I'm just going to disconnect my air supply. And by the way, this is really hard for some reason to remove when that's under pressure. I'm going to actually mount one of those filters to the base here so that it's always connected to it. I'm trying to run those filters at, right before it gets into any piece of equipment that I'm using, with the exception of like hand tools and whatnot. But as far as like heavier, heavier equipment like this and my plasma cutter, you know, I'm trying to run multiple filters on there to try to keep it as, you know, the air as clean and, and moisture free as possible. So let me just drop this down here. Release the pressure. And one thing you want to know, if I try bending this back right now, or collapsing this, it starts going, and it stopped, okay? The reason why it stopped is because the anti-spring back pin. Okay, and now there's pressure from me pulling on it, so this is not wanting to come out of its hole. So, I need to release it, pick this up, turn it. Now I can bring it all the way back. Actually, you know what? Let me push that back out there. I want to show you how to, to repin this real quick. Okay, so that's, that's sprung back right here. It's, it's holding it. The anti spring back thing is holding it. So I'm going to pull this pin. Pull it out. Compress this a little bit. Drop the pin here. And start compressing it all the way. I have to lift this die set up because there's no tube in here to clear this arm. But if you watch, this other pin will drop into that hole. Boom. It's reset and ready to go. So now I have a bit of a bend on here if there was a piece of tubing in here. The reset pin's in there. The anti-spring back pin will lift up as you just start going and drop into the next hole. So I would just restart it and go, you know, just continue on with what I was doing. When your bend is done, release the pressure off the arm, pull your pin out, lift up your anti spring bag, and just twist this die back, and it'll release your tubing. You might have to bang it around a little bit depending on, on the tubing you're using. But that's it, it's done. So now you guys see how it works. You see the clearances, the clearance issues, you see why I haven't boxed in this area. And there's actually one other reason why I didn't box this in. If I choose to, to sell this, one of my concerns is this top bar and the bottom bar are smashed tight with these two bolts. These bolts are very much a structural deal for this. Uh, if these are not as tight as they're supposed to be, this whole thing is going to have slack and play in it. Okay, these pins are going to be hard to pull out of here. It's just not going to work right. These bolts have to be tight. If I box this in on this side the way I did here, and I try to sell that, if there's any variation between the thickness of this, between vendors that these guys are selling, one of two things could happen. Either one, they're going to fight to get this onto it because it's so, so tight, they're going to have to use a hammer, maybe try to pry it apart a little bit if they can. You know, it, it might not really fit. Um, the other thing is, is it might be a little bit too big. And even just like a, a sixteenth of an inch could be a big deal because you have a full plate back here keeping top and bottom plate from compressing when you put these bolts in. Now granted, if you're using a, a pretty, you know, pretty strong breaker bar or something like that, you could probably get it tight, but I, I would just rather not have that situation where you're fighting against a solid plate to compress these. 
Um, this right here will more than likely be redesigned if, if I sell a kit, uh, a, a completely built kit. And if I don't, I, what I might, the, one of the other options is, is to sell a weld together kit or even just sell plans for it. Um, if that's the case, then I don't have to worry about it. They can box all this stuff in if it, if it really needs it because there'll be instructions on how to put it together. And, and then at that point, they could do the same way I did. This works for me because if you watch the previous videos, I bolted this top and bottom plates down tight, tight as they'll go before I welded this, this boxed in plate here. So it, it's tight, it's as tight as it's gonna get. I had to use a hammer to tap it on there. It works for mine, but it might not work on another one. That's my concern. So anyways, this is a wrap for now. Subscribe, comment, like. Next week, today is, is Thursday, um, the 28th of February. Next week, not sure what day, I'm gonna order in my, my DOM tubing. I'm actually gonna order in one length of, of welded seam tubing. And the reason being is I'm gonna use that for some template bends. And I've talked about this in my other video, but I'll explain that to you during that because this video is already 26 minutes long. So again, subscribe, comment, and like, check out my Facebook page, like my Facebook page, support me, man, because I'm, I'm spending time on this, so support me. <laughs> um, and, and we'll go from there. Talk to you guys later.